So what we have to do as sound designers, we have to look at the big picture and then separate it up into uh, the components and then put it back together. So what we do is we look at the, what's important to the scene. Generally, dialogue is the most important thing. Uh, the actors are on screen. If we can't hear what they're saying, uh, we may have to loop them in a post-production, replacing their dialogue. Uh, or uh, we may have to spend more time on the set to get the right, dial uh, right clarity of the dialogue, because if there's a plane flying over, we're not going to be able to remove that from the track, so we have to stop and wait, and everybody gets pissed off. But we've got to wait for that sound to be good. Sound effects often is to help create the reality of the environment and uh, the fact that we feel like we're there. We hear the environment, we hear the, the buzz of the air conditioner, uh, we, we hear the footsteps clearly as they're walking through. The music often is more for the reaction, the emotional interpretation. Are people ecstatic or, or uh, ha uh, are they anxious or are they like disgusted and what is that happening on the inside level is more the musical interpretation. Storyboarding for sound is the equivalent of what you do uh, creating the image. It's the same idea of moving from one element to another that identifies your focus of attention. And so the focus in image is usually who's uh, larger on screen, uh, what is included, is it a close-up or is it a wide shot? So within the sound, you have the uh, parallel ideas with that. If it's a close-up, it's usually a sound that is of uh, a fuller uh, frequency spectrum. It sounds like it's close to you because you hear all of those sounds. If it's a far away sound, you're going to lose the high frequencies. It's going to feel like it's in the distance. The function of the mix is really to get all of the sounds in balance and to make the decisions about which ones are going to come more forward in volume and frequencies. We're able to uh, use equalization to change the uh, presence of sounds. Uh, in other words, with higher frequencies, you're going to hear something much more present in front of you as opposed to kind of far away and mu more muted. We should select the locations, first of all, that are as clean as possible with the sounds because if there's any location that has a, a change of the sound in the background, let's say you're at the beach and there's waves, if you decide later on you're going to be cutting different pieces of that into a sequence, the background sound is going to jump up and down, so it's going to be a nightmare for cutting it. So you generally want to find a location that's got as quiet a background as possible and as constant a background. And you also want to record then uh, just, just that background sound to have as a clean track and to be able to fill in holes and do that when you're editing. Silence is a way for us to hear sounds because the contrast is part of our makeup. It's part of how we perceive the world. There are different kinds of silences too. There's the relative silence of nobody's talking, but there's still the birds tweeting, the refrigerator hum. There's the silence of going into an anechoic chamber where there's no sound at all. It's almost scary because you're so used to having some kind of sound that you start to hear the blood rushing in your own ears. If you listen to a movie uh, and, and there's no sound, there's still the sound of the room, the room ambience. So there's really, really no perfect silence if you're alive and a being.